Hurricanes, Wild Weather by Lorraine Jean Hopping. Chapter 1, Through the Wall. Pretend you are a pilot. You are flying as high as the clouds. All you see is a wall of darkness. It is nighttime. Thunder booms. Lightning flashes. Your plane jumps up and down and side to side. You feel like popcorn in the making. You have orders to follow. You must fly into the center of a hurricane. Then you must fly out again. Seven times. Wes Bennett got those orders on September 17, 1989. On that day, a hurricane named Hugo was heading toward the east coast of the United States. But Wes was not scared. Flying through hurricanes is his job. Wes is a storm tracker. Storm trackers measure the size, temperature, and location of a hurricane. They take these readings from inside the storm. Their job is not an easy one. Hurricanes are huge masses of spinning winds that start out over the sea. They are packed with lightning, rain, and power. Every minute, a hurricane releases as much power as a hydrogen bomb. I... As soon as they got their orders, Wes Bennett and his crew flew off to meet Hugo. They headed for Hugo's eye, its center. But first, they had to get through the storm's feeder bands. These are the outer arms of the hurricane. They make the storm look like a giant pinwheel. Each arm is a long line of storm clouds. Sheets of rain pour down from these clouds. They flash with lightning and boom with thunder. They're, the winds are fast and strong. There is no way for storm trackers to avoid these feeder bands. I feeder band feeder band the eye eye wall when the storm trackers entered a feeder band it was pitch dark then lightning lit the sky near the plane the flash of light revealed a wall of black clouds Wes couldn't see where he was flying he had to fly by reading the instruments. The instruments told him the plane was 10,000 feet high. The left wing was pointing into the hurricane's wind, and the nose was pointing at Hugo's eye. So far, so good. But then the plane hit the eye wall, a tall wall of clouds around the eye. It is where the hurricane winds spin the fastest. They can reach 180 miles per hour. Sometimes these winds toss a plane right out of the hurricane. Planes can turn only so fast, Wes explained. The high winds change direction suddenly and throw you out. When that happens, the plane has to circle around and try again. Luckily, Wes and his crew were able to slip inside Hurricane Hugo, but not without a scare. The plane bounced so hard that the seat belts hurt. The instruments went out of whack for a few seconds. Wes fought to keep his hands and feet on the controls. Then the jolting stopped. In an instant, the storm trackers broke through the tall wall of clouds. They were inside Hugo's calm, clear eye. Chapter 2, Inside the Eye From inside the eye, Hugo looked like a football stadium made of beautiful silver storm clouds. Like bleacher seats, the clouds rose from the ocean in layers. They were m more than four miles high. The ocean formed a flat football field. The waves were small and calm. Some hurricane stadiums have a dome of clouds above the eye. Hugo did not. The storm trackers could see clear to the stars. A full moon lit the eye of Hurricane Hugo. But not all was calm and clear in Hugo's eye. Wes Bennett felt dizzy. He couldn't tell which way was up. More important, he wasn't sure which way was down. 
The instrument showed one thing. Wes's body told him the opposite. My co-pilot was watching me to make sure I didn't listen to my body, Wes said. I followed the instruments even though they didn't seem right. But the instruments were right. Wes kept the plane inside the eye for several uneasy minutes. That was long enough for the weather experts to drop a box out of the plane. This box held weather instruments. It floated by parachute down to the sea. As it dropped, the instruments measured the temperature and other conditions in the heart of the storm. Still dizzy, Wes now had to fly out of the hurricane. There was only one way out. He had to go back through the windy eye wall. Then he had to cross the storm feeder bands again. Did Wes head home? Not a chance. He and the crew flew through Hur Hurricane Hugo seven times as ordered. Their data went to the National Hurricane Center in Florida. The data helped scientists predict Hugo's deadly path. The day of the flight, Hugo swept across the island of St. Croix in the Caribbean Sea. Dozens of islanders lost their lives. Thousands lost their homes. Four days later, on September 21, 1989, Hugo slammed into South Carolina. All hurricanes create storm surges. A storm surge is a sudden rise in the water level of the ocean. Storm surge, wind wave, high tide, average sea, average sea level. Hugo's storm surge was 20 feet high. It washed away houses and bridges. Winds gusted to 150 miles per hour. Cars flipped over. Boats crashed ashore. Trees were flattened into giant toothpicks. In all, Hugo killed 504 people, but millions survived. Some people took shelter in schools and other buildings. Others had evacuated or cleared out of town hours before the storm. Reports on the radio had warned them the storm trackers helped make these reports possible.